Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky. And this is Christine Mummer. And we are biology professors at the Harrisburg Area Community College, York Campus. And in this video podcast, we're going to be reviewing, using the muscle model, the muscles of the head and face. Starting out, let's take a look at the frontalis muscle. This is located on the frontal bone of the skull. And the frontalis is actually one of two parts. It's the frontal belly of the occipitofrontalis muscle. This muscle originates on the scalp, and there is a large, flat, membrane-like tendon, the aponeurosis, sitting on top of the skull that connects the anterior frontalis, the frontal belly, with the posterior occipitalis, or occipital belly. And we'll look at that muscle next. The frontalis inserts onto the skin along the eyebrow on the supraorbital margin of the skull, just above the orbit where the eyeball is located. The action of the frontalis is elevation of the eyebrows, and elevation means it raises the eyebrows up. It also draws back the scalp and wrinkles the forehead. This is the occipitalis muscle, and this is part of the occipitofrontalis muscle. It's the posterior muscle belly of that larger two-part muscle. We looked at the frontalis muscle in the previous podcast. The occipitalis is named after its location on the posterior occipital bone of the skull, and its actions are to draw back the scalp and wrinkle the forehead. This is the temporalis muscle. It is named after its location on the temporal bone of the skull, and it has a lateral orientation. Here, lateral means it's on the side of the skull. Its action is to elevate or raise up the mandible, which is the lower jaw. It also retracts or pulls the lower jaw inward. And it also assists in side-to-side -side movements of the mandible. This is the auricularis anterior. The word auricular refers to the ears. It is deep or underneath the temporalis muscle, and this is one of several auricularis muscles located around the ears. There's also a superior and posterior auricularis muscle. And the actions include moving the ears. So if you're able to wiggle your ears, you have a well-developed auricularis anterior muscle. This is the orbicularis oculi. This is a round muscle the prefix orb refers to a round shape, and this muscle surrounds the eye at the orbits. The orbit is the eye socket where the eyeball is located. The word oculi is a reference to the eye. The action of the orbicularis oculi is to close the eyelids. This is the muscle that we use when we blink, squint, or wink. Our next muscle is the orbicularis oris. Like the orbicularis oculi, this is a round muscle, but its location is around the mouth. That's what oris refers to, like an oral. It's located on both the upper jaw, the maxilla, and the lower jaw, the mandible. Its actions include closing the mouth, closing the lips together, it also protrudes the lips, pushing the lips out. Its nickname is the kissing muscle for its obvious function in puckering up, and it's also used in whistling and vocalizations. This is the zygomaticus major. This muscle originates on the zygomatic bone, also called the cheekbone, and inserts on the corners or angles of the mouth. Its actions include its use in vocalization, in speaking. 
It also draws the corners of the mouth upward and outward in large open mouth types of movements. You can imagine this muscle when it contracts pulling up the corners of the mouth. It's also a major muscle used in smiling and laughing. This is the triangularis, also called the depressor anguli oris. This muscle is located on the mandible, the lower jaw, and it originates at the corners or angles of the mouth. And its two names come from its triangular shape, triangularis, and also its action. Depressor anguli oris refers to its movements of lowering, depressor, the angles, the, the corners, of the mouth, which is oris. It is nicknamed the frowning muscle because of this action. These are the mentalis muscles. These are a small pair of muscles that insert onto the lower lips. The word mentalis is a reference to their location, which is on the mentum, or mental region, the most anterior part of the mandible. The actions of the mentalis include contracting to elevate and push the lower lips outward in a protrusion type action. Their nickname is the pouting muscles because of these movements. The rhizorius is a small muscle located on the lateral side of the skull and it's found sort of in between the anterior triangularis and the posterior masseter. The rhizorius's action is to pull the corners or angles of the mouth laterally out to the side. It's used in lots of vocalization movements, along with smiling and grinning. This is the masseter. It's a large, massive muscle located on the posterior mandible, and its name comes from its action, which is maceration which is a 50-cent word for chewing. It's elevating the mandible during the chewing movements and also slightly protracts the mandible, pushes it forward during chewing. The buccinator is a muscle that lies deep to the rhizorius. Its name, buccal, is a reference to the cheeks which is where it's located. Its action, similar to the rhizorius, is to draw the corners of the mouth laterally, but it's also used to compress the cheeks in a suction action, like when you're whistling or when you're sucking on a straw. Remember the phrase, the bucks sucks, to help you remember the action of the buccinator.